Hey, what's up everyone? So we got Hubert here, ready to say hello. We are feeding him some pellets. He always loves to come up to the top. You can just drop a pellet right in his mouth. But you have to be careful because he can get your fingers at times. There you go, buddy. There you go. How cool is that? Bam. And then whatever the turtle doesn't get, the pleco usually comes up and uh, gets the rest. Oh, drop that one. Sometimes he just goes a little bit bonkers. You can see right there, he kind of got my finger a little bit. Because he just launches right out of the water and says, let me get it. There he goes. He's now trying to get the one on the floor. Hubert, back up here, buddy. I still have a handful. Here he comes. So these Fly River Turtles are super cool to, to own. They're, they're very personable, but they can bite. <laughs> if you're careful with, with them, you don't have to worry about it. But uh, I have been bitten too many times for my own good. There we go. He's almost done. So if you guys have uh, been following along, you know he's not our only Fly River Turtle. Um, these guys are super cool, super intelligent, like I said, super personable. I've taught him to every time I come up and I boop his nose, he comes up for, for food. And that's how I can do this whole hand feeding type thing. And uh, there we go. There just went a whole handful of algae wa wafers. And he's like, come on, Dad, where's the good stuff? Give me the good stuff. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and do a little video on... Uh, facts about the fly river turtle and how i think they're so personable and so so cool you guys know we have hubert right here in the 650 gallon tank um he just kind of sits here because he is uh i keep saying personable he's most personable because he'll come up and he will hand feed the other turtles don't really do it so much i worked with hubert for quite a long time to be able to get him to come up and eat like this so uh, that's why he is back in this tank. Now we have another fly river turtle over here in the 4,400 gallon tank. You guys can see that they kind of just glide through the water and it's super cool when they come down to the bottom, they kind of drop their back end like they're coming in on a landing strip and they're in an airplane. See how they stick them back legs straight down? Well, they'll come cruising in, they'll set their back legs down and just go boom right on the bottom. Let's see if uh, she'll do it here. She is going down to the bottom. But they're so graceful in the, the, the water. These are the uh, only species of fully aquatic tur turtles. They never come out of the, the, the water. They don't need to come out and bask. The only time that they, that they will is just like a sea turtle. They will come up onto the sandy beaches and they will drop their eggs. In this case, the flyover turtles are from Papua New Guinea. So uh, you can kind of imagine what kind of substrate is on that, that their be beaches. It's like a sandy, sil silty mix. But that is far and few between that these guys actually come out and breed and stay out of the water. You can see that giraffe cat's kind of messing with the turtle. Not, nothing aggressive. He's just looking for food. But this video is about these guys right here. But I just absolutely love them. And it's... Quite what amazing that we've gotten so met the many. One, one is my personal, and three have been uh, rescues so far. Well, one happened to be one, one of my friends. He's getting out of the hobby. Asked me to hold on to his fly river turtle for him. So we're going. We're going to go ahead and do that. But the two big guys, Hubert and this one here, are actually rescues. The parents of this fly river turtle here actually we're, we're moving and they didn't allow them to have a turtle with them so he still watches the vi videos and uh marvin can see his old turtle here she is doing great she is loving life in this huge awesome tank um she eats what well for us as you you can see kind of a flawless tur turtle if you ask me the shell is per perfect the fins are perfect. It's not not too fat, not too skinny. So definitely a beautiful turtle. To, you know, watching your, your aquariums, it was on my bucket list for a very long time. 
and now I've ha had one for over 10 years. These guys are just awesome creatures if you ask me. But while we're out on the topic, let's go over here and talk about some other turtles. As you guys can see, we did get some new fish in. There's red tails here. There's a few Florida gar in here. There's a clown knife there, gold clown knife there. And there are three Florida gars in here. They're probably hiding in this. Up oh, there goes one, there goes two, there goes three. These were just picked up yesterday. And uh, we got a long nose gar down, down here. He's not do doing so hot, but he's alone. He can't game in, had no fins, had fungus all over him. As you can see, we are treating this tank again. Um, but he should be good. He's kind of got like a bent mouth. Let me see if I can focus in on that. I don't know if you guys can tell, but his top snout is like pushed over a quarter inch to where he was kind of messed up. If you look from it on top, I don't know how well you guys can see, but the top part of his snout is actually missing there. What you're seeing is his bo bottom snout. So he was messed up in more ways than one. So we're gonna do, do our best to help this guy. I have not gotten him to eat yet, but he can ba barely swim as is. We've gotten the fungus under wrap, and now we are working on uh, getting the rest of the wounds healed up and then worrying about feeding him. Um, over here, I showed you that. We've got the other Fly River Turtle. This is the one that my friend ju just brought us. Again, another great looking turtle. It's got a little bit of uh, wrinkles on the shell, but that is all right. I will fix that in no time, but there is not a whole lot wrong with it. this guy. He is a super chunker, and he is only a few years old. So definitely love the flyover turtles. They are super cute when they are young. They got them little pig nose. That's why they're called the pig nose turtle. They are super adorable. But you guys might notice that we have this Vitatis tigerfish up here. This was also picked up yesterday. Got beat up a little bit in transport, but all in all, he is doing well. So I'm going to let him quarantine in here with the, the, the turtle. And uh, they can both heal up once I get this guy on to do some shrimp. I've got a tank picked out for him already. And uh, shouldn't be too stressful on him. And he can go right into it. Actually, both of these... The flyover turtle and the Vitatis tigerfish <coughs> are going to come over here into the 600 gallon tank. So you, you guys re remember we've got uh, the albino ray, we've got the black diamonds, the armadas, um, that's pancake over there. Sorry I, I forgot got the name for a minute, but we've got uh, butthead over here. This is one of the two Arapaimas that we kept. You guys remember we got rid of the other one to my, my friend's pond. And this is uh, the Armadas. So if you guys remember, we had just picked up this Armadas. This was the bigger of the, the two. This was uh, donated to us by a guy up in Michigan. He's actually one the one that just called and had us pick up the Vitatis Tigerfish. You've seen how well the Armadas was doing. He knew the tiger fish needed a lot larger tank, so uh, he called his boys up at Ohio Fish Re Rescue. So we went and picked them up yesterday. So I would like to put that turtle and the Vitatis tiger fish in this 600 gallon tank. This is a little bit more mellow and peaceful, so the tiger fish should come in, do, do, do well. He's with an old tank mate, they got along just fine. And uh, who knows, I might have the Arapaima out of here by then. Alrighty, last but not least, we have the last Fly River Turtle in here. Now you guys can tell, do you see that little notch right up there on the top of his shell? That is actually not 100% right. There's a little bit of something wrong with him. It's not nothing too extreme, it can be fixed and I'm in the process of fit fixing it. It happened pretty abruptly. Well, this guy being in this thousand gallon here with all of these meat eaters, the turtle comes over. He's like, mmm, the meat tastes better than these stupid algae wafers and whatnot. And uh, he was 
eating more meat than veggies in this tank and he started growing a bit too quick. So as you, you can see, that little, little thing was from his shell growing too fast and uh, that will relax back down. I just kind of have to put him onto a diet, but this is a good uh, learning experience for someone who might not be uh, too well versed with fly river turtles. Um, once I start uh, slowing down his metabolism, not his metabolism, but like hit his growth rate a little bit, have more vet the veggie and fruit intakes rather than the meat, which uh, I'll explain how I'm doing that in just a moment, but he will start filling out his shell once again and that will re relax back down and I just have to make sure that he stays that, that way. I've fixed him many times before in the past. It is really common with small fly river turtles. You don't really have to worry about it with large fly river turtles, but not, nonetheless, I know it's there. I'm addressing the issue. So how I'm doing that is I'm kind of forcing him to eat veggie wafers in this tank. Um, I throw in just a little bit of you know meat. I make sure the catfish get, get fed. They're the first ones on it. Once I see all of that the meat, I then throw in the veggie wafers and the tur turtle comes right over and eat, eat, eats them up. I've already seen an improvement on his shell. So I know uh, we caught it in time and uh, he will go back to normal in no time. But once that other flyover turtle comes out of quarantine, I'm thinking I'm going to put him into the uh, quarantine tank over there so I can just feed him a lot more ve veggies easier than having to go into this thousand gallon tank. Like Hubert over here, I can just reach down, toss him some grapes, some banana stuff like that. But being in a tank like this, it's a lot harder. And I want to be able to give him bananas and stuff. So he will eventually be coming out. Um, so that is uh, it about the facts on the Fly River Turtle. Let's go to a funny story. So, you know, I used to have a Fly River Turtle about the size of Hubert. His name was Nibbler. He got that name because when I'm in this tank here, I am in there cleaning up the glass. Nibbler loved to come over, open up his mouth, and put my big toe right in his mouth. He did it for years. And it got to the point I'd always like shoo, shoo him away, shoo him away, nothing. He'd come right, right back. He wanted my toe in his mouth. So I, I just learned I got in the tank. Nibbler can't get him over. He hopped on, on my foot and uh, I cleaned the glass and I went on about my business. Well, one day I'm in said tank and Mr. Nibbler comes up and nibbles on my toe. So I'm like, all right, Nibbler, here you go. Have fun, bud. And this turtle bit down so freaking hard. I screamed like a little girl and I ended up getting rid of Nibbler because I was so frustrated and mad. But uh, I traded Nit Nibbler to a, a good friend of mine and he actually gave me a smaller Fly River Turtle, two big detonoids that I wanted, and uh, a couple filters that I needed at, at the time. So all worked out well, but you always have to be careful with your turtles. Well, for that matter, be careful with all of your, your fish. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I will catch you in the next one. Stay fishy, my friends.